Hey, this is Andrew Ains with Apex Pro. I'm here today to use one of my videos in a car that I drove recently to uh, just share how I use the Apex Pro lights to understand more about my driving and learn where I'm leaving some grip and therefore in most cases some time on the table. Um, so let's set the stage. This is at Barber Motorsports Park, which is my home racetrack. I'm very familiar with it. Um, I'm working with Bobby Chapman, who's a, a coaching client of mine, and he had me drive the car to get some data laps for him. He's in the right seat. So these are conservative laps. The goal is not to go out there and set the world on fire, but it's to get him a reference lap so that he has something to build off of and to aspire towards. So really, I'm trying to go out there and drive the car quickly, but in a way that I think he can do eventually. Um, so I'm not Basically, long story short, this is not 10 tenths. This is fast, but conservative and under control. So I've got a video that I posted recently. It's a GoPro camera angle using the Apex Pro Lap Timer Plus video renderer, which you can actually do. Um, it takes a little bit of effort. Uh, we'll do a separate video about that sometime. But I'm going to share the screen over to the video and talk through a lap, just focusing on what the Apex Pro lights are showing and what I'm getting out of that. So how I'm using what we see on the light bar down here, also reflected on the light bar, obviously with the Apex Gen 2 mounted up here and how we know there's some things on the table. So we just let this GT3 RS go. That's Conway Hong. He's also an Apex Pro user. Um, he's passing us down the straightaway and we're about to go into turn one. Here's our track position down here in the bottom right, speedometer and our rolling lap time. This is a GT3 Touring on Michelin Pilot, uh, Sport, uh, Pilot Sport Cup 2s. Um, it's chilly and overcast. It's pretty decent grip. Well, the weather's decent for grip has actually been raining several days prior and it starts raining near the end of the session. So the track's fairly green. So there's not as much grip as there would normally be if the track was totally dry. Um, but it doesn't matter for the Apex Pro lights. They're, they're building off of what they've seen while we're driving. We've already done a couple of laps. So what the Apex Pro shows us is going to be a good reference to work off of. You can actually see the car wiggle in the brake zone right there and the lights are all green. That's telling me that I'm probably braking as hard as I need to be braking there. All green lights means I'm at the limit of grip. The car actually visibly wiggling in the video. Let's watch this, I'm gonna play it again. Watch the hands on the steering wheel here. See that little juggle of the wheel? That means we're probably right at the limit of the car. I actually can go back to power sooner here. And I'm gonna tell you how I know that just with the lights. I'm at 73 miles per hour. I'm all green. I'm back on the power. 73 is a little overslowed there. And the way I know it is these three red lights that I see on my way down to the apex. Right? Actually, minimum speed ends up going down to 72 here. This car does not have a wing like a GT3 RS. A GT3 RS is probably going to have an 80 mile per hour or so minimum speed there. That's That wing is a, is a really big contributor to that. But I know that I overslowed this car, and mainly that's because I consistently saw those three red lights entering the corner. Now I'm at the middle of the corner. I've got a lot of lateral load. I'm back on the power. I'm probably at the limit of the tire. The problem is I'm at the limit of the tire, but I'm going too slow. Um, so three lights entering the corner is how I know. You can see how fast this car accelerates. So getting back to power, even though we overslowed a little bit, there's not a huge penalty. And actually looking at a car that carries more minimum speed there, um, there's a very minimal time difference up to turn two, unless you're carrying a lot more minimum speed. That's kind of a track peculiarity. So this is a long sustained corner. And in my opinion, this is one of the most valuable places to see the Apex Pro lights while you're in the car. Now, when we're looking at it after the fact, let's just remember that green lights indicate your performance, red lights indicate the limit of the car's capability or the tire's limit is kind of what it's reflecting. So when we see red lights, that means there's opportunity, there's something out there to go get. In this case, we're gonna see almost all green lights throughout the duration of the corner, usually with one red light on the end of the light bar. Usually what that's telling us is that the car is understeering a little bit, and here's why. Uh, when we're at the limit and we're all green, the next step, if we go faster or we ask the car to accelerate anymore, is going to be either understeer or oversteer. Oversteer is, also, is always accompanied by the rear tire sliding, a little bit of counter steer, and a little bit of drama. For watching a video like this, you can tell pretty, pretty quickly we're not oversteering. When you see one red light come off the end of the light bar after you've been at all green, 
usually those are the front tires picking up a slide. Therefore, you're accelerating less hard, actually. So you get the car really loaded up, it understeers, and actually it frees up a little bit because it starts sliding, the, the tire loses some adhesion. There we go. Right when I went back to power, the nose came up in the air, a little bit understeer. All right, let's fast forward a little bit here. All right, turn five that we're approaching now is the threshold braking corner. It's the hardest braking point on the track at Barber. Let's talk about what that means with Apex Pro lights. We want to see a quick transition from some red lights to all green as soon as we touch the brake pedal. If it doesn't go quickly to all green lights, if it takes time to get there. That means you can transition more quickly. That also means go look at your speed trace. You'll probably see a soft top, not a sawtooth top on your speed trace. So we're going into five on the brakes. Let's watch that again. Watch how quickly on the gas, on the gas, on the brakes. If it takes any more time than what we just saw there for you to get all green lights in the brake zone, you're not transitioning to the brake quick enough. Now, right here in the brake zone, almost always, even, even in the Porsche that's auto blipping on the downshifts, the drivetrain inertia or just that little change, you know, depressing the clutch and coming back out of it, you're going to see some red lights. If you have a PDK Porsche or a DSG BMW or a, a paddle shifted car, DSG Volkswagen, whatever BMW calls their paddle shift gearbox, you can actually maintain all green lights throughout the braking zone. It's a little harder in a manual car just because you have a little more um, drivetrain inertia that kind of has to occur when you depress the clutch. A little more entry speed there. I actually probably could have started turning in a little bit sooner is sometimes what those red lights are telling me. So if you're consistently seeing some red lights on corner entry, sometimes you can actually start your turn in a little earlier and try to roll a little more speed right there. There's a, there's a tiny extra bit of margin there. When you're leaving some time on the table as well, in most cases, it's gonna be on corner entry. So it's not surprising. Let's go look at another part of the track. Let's talk about corner exit. So we've talked about braking and corner entry. Let's talk about getting out of this corner right here. This is the bottom of the museum corner at Barber. We call this, some, map, some maps call it seven, some maps call it eight, some maps call it nine. I call it turn nine or the museum corner. If you're using Lap Timer Plus and you've got your video rendered like this, listen to the sound of the engine. Um, watch the speedometer to see when it's you know, increasing, and that's going to tell you when you get back on the throttle. If you see red lights after you've committed to throttle, that means you probably could be at full throttle or you could commit to more throttle. So in this case, let's watch the progression of the corner here and listen to the, um, to the sound of the car. Saw that one red light for understeer. In that case, I would say that's as close to as perfect of an exit as I'm going to get just based on the fact that I'm not seeing any consistent amount of red lights. So that's a little bit of analysis on um, corner entry from turn one, a sustained corner in the turn two, three complex at Barber, um, braking zone in turn five and corner exit in turn nine. Go back and revisit this video as you need to, to kind of get a sense for what you're seeing and then go replay. You don't have to use the video to get this information, you can just open up your Apex Pro app. You can press the play button and watch those Apex Pro lights go. And that's gonna give you a high level understanding of where am I leaving grip on the table? You wanna correlate that with what input you're giving the car. Am I asking it to turn, brake, or accelerate? And then either do more of that, of that input or do something to make the car's speed and therefore acceleration increase at that moment. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope that was helpful.